Oh, sweet, a training bear. Hey, man, nice to meet you. So you're just all right with me hitting you? Yeah, yeah, no worries. Tiny cuts won't ruin me or anything. Well, what about this massive cannon? Did you say cannon? Jesus, oh, God, no, please. Oh, it's too late. It's on a timer. Ah, my legs and the rest of me. Ladies, gentlemen, and hunters of all ages, you've all been starting to get your hands on Wild Hearts now, either with the free trial or the release of the full game, and there's something very important to talk about, the Karakuri system. Now, there are eight weapons in the game for you to play with, eight different movesets, and each of them is capable of toppling most kimono without Karakuri. But if you play like that, you are essentially cutting off both your legs and swinging a weapon from the ground. Karakuri are super important within this game, and if you come from a Monster Hunter background, for example, as far as this genre goes, then your instincts might be to just avoid using the Karakuri, but I'm here to tell you that that is a totally incorrect decision in the long run. So today we'll be going over all of the basic Karakuri, and then we'll go over every single fusion Karakuri that's in the game. The fusion Karakuri are what happens when you put a combination of either three or six basic Karakuri in a specific order in front of you, but you can't make it even if you have the base Karakuri until you get a flash of inspiration mid-hunt. They transform into something totally new and unique, and they each have a particularly strong and unique effect as well, being all but mandatory if you want to hunt effectively. So first, of course, we will touch on the basic Karakuri and why you should be using them in your hunts, then I'll go over each of the fusion Karakuri afterwards, what the combo is to make them, what it does, the best situations for its use, and of course we'll talk about any places that you can upgrade them in the upgrade tree and what those actually do. Then at the very end of the video, in a spoiler-based section, I will be showing each flash of inspiration actually happen, so that way you'll know exactly where in the game and in which part of the hunt you can expect to get each one. Of course, those are spoilers though, as they happen during specific hunts with different kimono, so if you don't want to see the kimono, then don't watch that section quite yet. I will, however, also put the flashes for kimono that are already revealed within their relevant sections. It's worth mentioning as well, if you have fought the kimono that can give you the flash of inspiration and it didn't happen, it will show you the icon for the kimono as well as the karakuri that you need to have equipped on your upgrade tree screen, like this. Without further ado then, let's get on with, well, the box. It's a box. What a beautiful shape. The main use of this is as a springboard jumping platform to get vertical distance from where you're standing. Every weapon in the game is a jump attack that it can do off of one of these boxes, and some of them are quite strong, but a fun way to use them is simply to dodge upwards on an attack with a big horizontal hitbox. Then secondly, we have the Spring Karakuri. This is probably the most useful in average situations. This is the horizontal equivalent of the box. It sends you the direction that you're looking a pretty long distance, and you can do an attack from this as well, but the main deal with this one is that it has a ton of iframes when you use it, so if an attack is coming at you that you cannot dodge positionally in time, this spring is your safe response. Third up is the torch. Mega fire! Okay. This will light your weapon on fire, both adding fire damage and the fire ailment, giving you a possibility to trigger some major damage if you hit enough during its uptime. Then we have the glider Karakuri. You unlock this as part of the early story and its main use is actual traversal. Most weapons can do some sort of attack from this aerial position, but its main purpose is simply as an effective way to travel through the air quickly and safely. After that is the stake, and this is probably the one with the least practical usage. When you stand on it, it fires a shot out in front of you, and if it connects with an appropriate surface, it will fling you towards it while riding the stake, and then get lodged in the wall or the kimono. This is effective for climbing, because you can just place them into walls themselves and use them to reset your stamina on larger climbs. Then finally, we have the Celestial Thread Karakuri. This one you have to unlock manually by spending points on it, and it is quite deep in the Karakuri upgrade tree, so you'll have to wait until you unlock something close to it and then just build your way over. What it actually does, though, is quite cool. Once you interact with it, you can jump up to five times in any direction, even in the middle of an animation. This gives you iframes, of course, and it also lets you fly around the battlefield as much as you want. Personally, I don't use this one too much in combat, but that is mostly because I haven't gotten used to it, and also because I mainly use combo-based weapons, which it doesn't really interact all that well with. However, I imagine with some weapons, once you get the hang of this movement, it will be incredibly useful. And that is all the basic Karakuri covered. Each of them have their own uses, and some are better for certain weapons than others, but honestly, you're way more likely to choose your actual Karakuri loadout based on the fusions that you want to make, rather than the basics themselves, as the fusion Karakuri are really what controls the battlefield as a whole. Let's start talking about those then in order of unlock. First we have the Bulwark. 
This unlocks when fighting King Tusk if you have the boxes equipped. The actual creation combo is six boxes. If you just press the box button six times while standing still, it will make the correct shape. If you move while making a fusion carrot curry, it definitely has issues, so do your best to do it without moving. What this fusion does is simply stop kimono attacks that hit it while it's active. It technically works on all attacks like a wall, but you can use it to create a bit of a space space, and then after a few hits, it will break. But the main proper use of this is on charging attacks, as if a charging kimono hits the barricade, you'll get a proper flinch and more often than not, a knockdown as well. There are two upgrades along the Karakuri upgrade tree, each of which boosting the durability of this option, making it able to take more hits before it breaks. Secondly is the Pounder. This unlocks when you are fighting Spine Glider with the spring equipped. The creation combo is simply three springs stacked on top of each other. This one creates a giant mallet that slams down in front of it after a couple of seconds. It does some okay damage and more importantly, it has a pretty high stagger value so it can cause flinches and knockdowns if you use it enough. The ideal situation for this though is when a kimono is perched up on top of something and balancing as this can knock them down. Though not many kimono actually do that, so it's mostly just for its stagger value. There are two upgrades for the pounder in the Karakuri upgrade tree. One of them increases the damage and one of them increases the chances of getting a knockdown from a pounder hit. Third up, we have the firework Karakuri. This comes from an unannounced early game kimono. I'll show its actual flash in the spoiler section, but the creation of this requires six torches. Once done, it creates a mechanism that fires fireworks into the sky to distract kimono. This has a minimal effect on most kimono, but its main purpose is for anything that is currently flying. If a kimono is flying and you make this karakuri, it has a high chance of knocking them down to the ground out of the air. There are two upgrades for this available. One of them expands the range of the karakuri, and the other one increases the chance of causing a proper knockdown. Fourth is the heal Healing Mist Karakuri. This one comes from Lava Back, the fiery gorilla from the trailers, and it is created with three gliders in a vertical line. After its creation, it will spew out healing gas in a short range, around it slowly regenerating your health. It's quite useful, and in some later hunts, healing water will start to feel like a little sparse, and this thing will fill the role for just the cost of some thread. It is especially good if a kimono hits you hard enough that you aren't at full health, but have taken less damage than a healing water heals, as this helps a lot with those little chips to let you preserve your healing water charges for later in the fight. As for the actual upgrades in the tree, there are two once again. One of them increases how long it will stay active before disappearing, and the other one increases its effective range. Fifth up, we have the Elemental Lantern Karakuri. Again, this comes from an unannounced kimono, and its creation is done with a box-glider-box combo. Now we're starting to get into the mixed ones where it gets a bit more complex. What this does then is reduce the damage of any incoming elemental attacks while it's active. It lasts a fair while, and it is relatively effective. Quite simply, its best use is if you are fighting a kimono that is using mostly elemental attacks, which a lot of them tend to do, so just keep this one in your pocket to help reduce the damage of these. There are two upgrades for this as well. One of them increases the time that the buff is active, and the other one further reduces the damage that you take during its effect. Sixth then is the Shield Wall Karakuri. This one comes from Gold Shard when you have the box and spring equipped. It creates an impenetrable wall in front of you, but only lasts for a couple of seconds before disappearing all on its own. Its combo is Box Spring Box. This can technically be used to block any attack if you time it right, but due to its short duration, the bulwark is generally better in most scenarios for that purpose. The best use of this, however, is for gigantic attacks that would otherwise decimate the bulwark, and it also has a secondary effect of knocking over a kimono that is doing a charging attack just the same. There are two upgrades for this in the tree, both of them increasing the length of time that the shield wall will stay active. After that is the repeater crossbow karakuri. This comes from an unrevealed kimono, and it comes if you have gliders and stakes equipped, with the actual combo being glider stakes glider in a vertical line. When created, this turns into a big automatic crossbow that will just repeatedly fire shots at the kimono in front of you. You can make multiple at a time, and it does decent enough damage, and its specific best usage is generally against flying kimono, where it will completely topple them if you do enough damage with the ballista. There are once again two upgrades for this in the tree, which are both for increasing the damage of this fusion karakuri. Eighth on our list is the star bomb fusion karakuri, which comes from a very unrevealed kimono, but to get it you need to have torches and springs equipped, and the combo to construct it is Spring Torch Spring, and once done, this will turn into a big explosive device. This will explode on its own after a while, but if a kimono walks into it, it will explode early for quite a lot of damage and a decent amount of stagger damage too. This is best used when kimono are using flip type attacks or attacks that will just generally have them land down on top of you, as this will make them land directly on top of the explosion for extra stagger. This has two upgrades on the Karakuri tree, one that increases the range of the actual explosion part, and one that increases the damage that it deals. 
skills. Ninth up is the Chain Trap Karakuri, and this unlocks from fighting Deathstalker, the Ice Wolf, if you have boxes and stakes equipped. The combination pattern is stake, stake, box, stake, stake, box, which will then transform into a panel on the floor. When a kimono walks over the panel, a bunch of little harpoon-like things will pop up and impale them, which then locks them in place for a few seconds. This is arguably one of the two most universally useful fusion Karakuri in the entire game. I use it on every single hunt. It is the equivalent of a pitfall trap for anyone who plays Monster Hunter. It's just a large period of downtime for you to whack out your strongest combos on the kimono's weak spot. Repeated use will make it less effective, of course, as it has diminishing returns, but a couple of these a hunt will always be super helpful. There are two upgrades for this on the Karakuri tree, both of which increase the amount of time that it will keep a kimono locked down. After that is the Healing Vaporizer. This comes from Sap Scourge, but specifically in Chapter 3 of the story onwards, and it requires the Torch and Celestial Thread basic Karakuri to be equipped. The specific combo is Torch, Thread, Torch, and once down, it puts a little sphere on the floor, which after a couple of seconds will pop and release a wave of healing that also clears any ailments that are on you. The heal itself is actually really good. Once upgraded, it's basically a healing water for 5 Thread, which in late game is really good value. This has two upgrades in the Karakuri tree, one which extends its effective range, and the other one, which I mentioned, which increases the healing effect, but it also adds a steady heal over time effect for a short duration afterwards. After that is the Harpoon Fusion Karakuri, which comes during a very specific story fight that I do not want to spoil in the slightest, but know that it requires you to have springs and stakes to unlock, with the combo being spring, spring, stake, spring, spring, stake. Once constructed, the Harpoon will fire at the kimono and lock it down, dealing a pretty solid amount of damage, even at long range and also giving a bit of CC until the kimono manages to pull it out of itself. It has an extra effect on flying kimono, which it has a decent chance of toppling from the sky. This Karakuri also has two upgrades, one which increases the power of the shot, and another that increases the durability, making it harder for kimono to rip it out of themselves. Then we have the Pile Driver Fusion Karakuri. This one is unlocked during a specific story moment, not even a flash of inspiration, but just know it is guaranteed to happen when it is supposed to. This is created with the combination of two stakes, but they must be placed while you are grabbing onto a kimono, you need to place them onto the kimono itself, which makes it a touch awkward and very unique. When you successfully activate it, though, it will make the kimono as a whole a bit more vulnerable to damage. It doesn't seem to be a particularly massive debuff to the kimono, but while active, it does increase your damage when you hit it, so it definitely has some really important uses. As for how good it is, that will require some further testing, but just knowing that it exists is massive. This has two upgrades on the tree. The first one increases the damage of the pile driver impact itself, and the second increases the length of time that it will remain attached and thus the length of the debuff. Now we're coming pretty close to the end with the second last one being the Celestial Cannon. This unlocks when fighting Golden Tempest when you have both the Celestial Thread and Torch Karakuri equipped, and the actual combo is Thread, Torch, Thread, Thread, Torch, Thread, which will then transform into a straight up gigantic cannon that does quite a significant amount of damage when it hits and has a decent chance of causing a topple for a significant period of downtime on the kimono. When we're talking about the damage, you'll see footage going on right Right now in which I'm fighting Sap Scourge exclusively with this cannon. I three shot him. This isn't a special Sap Scourge or anything, this is the regular early game Sap Scourge, but I three shot him using nothing but the cannon. This one is actually quite good, as you can imagine from that, and if you are running the required basic Karakuri to make it work, you should definitely be using this regularly, simple as that. This also has two upgrades in the tree, one of which increases the damage of the cannon shot itself, and the other increases the chances of a topple when the hit connects. Then the the final one in the game is called the Celestial Shield. This one happens when you fight an unrevealed kimono with the Celestial Thread and Box Karakuri equipped. The specific combo is Thread, Box, Thread, Thread, Box, Thread, and when you do this, it will create a sort of structure in front of you. This will sort of block any attacks that hit it, but it also has its own health bar. When you walk through the effect that pops up in this little box, it will give you a shield surrounding yourself. This shield will block one hit, including the flinch and damage, so if you get hit while the shield's on you, it will absorb these things and they won't affect you in the slightest. You can also walk back through the little effect in the box to go back and get the shield again. There are two upgrades for this as well. One of them increases the amount of time that the actual wall itself is up the celestial shield, and one of them increases the amount of time that the buff will stay on you, meaning that you can take a longer time before you get hit and still have the buff active. And that's all of them. How you get them for the non-spoiler ones, how to make them, what they do, and how to use them effectively, as well as the upgrades available for them. Past 
past this, we will be diving into the flashes of inspiration, all shown on screen for a bit of context of how to unlock them properly, as sometimes they just won't happen on your first or even second hunt, even with the right Karakuri equipped. But this is what they look like for each and every one. Keep an eye out for these moments during your hunts and be ready to react in turn. For now though, I'll be quiet and just let each of these flashes of inspiration play out one by one. Again, this is full of spoilers for Kimono you may not know about, so feel free to click away if you don't want to see these yet.
And that'll do it for today, everyone. A breakdown of all of the basic Karakuri, all of the fusion Karakuri, where they come from, what they're for, and how to use them in their ideal situations. I hope you've enjoyed this guide, and I hope it helps you work out what you want to focus on, and if you're struggling to unlock some of them, I hope this helps you find out how as well. Like if you like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye